Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about scrotal swelling and pain. I'm going to focus a little bit on the emergency room setting because this is where I saw this the other day. I had a young man came come in who was complaining, complaining of testicular pain. And uh, he'd been seen for it before and given antibiotics and uh, pain medication, but he was back in. We did a, a full workup again with ultrasound, and uh, he even got uh, uh, some pretty painful urethral swabs and things like that. And at the end, uh, it looked like he was probably just looking for more pain medication, which I thought uh, the urethral swab was a high price to pay for pain meds, but but that's what he seemed to be looking for since he'd had a, a history of coming in with similar symptoms. Anyway, so he the main causes of, of testicular swelling and pain uh, are testicular torsion, epididymitis, uh, Fournier's gangrene is not common, but we're going to talk about it because it's really serious. Hydrocele is a common thing, varicocele, torsion of the appendix testes, and then trauma, testicular cancer. Uh, we'll also mention inguinal hernia, Hennock Schönlein purpura and mumps uh, orchitis. So testicular torsion first. This is uh, due to inadequate fixation of the testes to the tunica vaginalis. So the history usually involves some kind of vigorous activity like uh, sports or sex, and um, and a sudden onset of uh, extreme pain. In uh, younger kids, a lot of times they'll be waking up in the middle of the night and uh, complaining of, of severe pain, but it's usually under 30. On exam, you see one testicle riding a little bit higher, and uh, you can see that, uh, that it's kind of uh, hamburger instead of hot dog shaped uh, as it sits there in the testicle or in the scrotum. And they call that the bell clapper. I don't even know what a bell clapper is, but uh, the bell clapper sign is uh, when you have a transverse axis of the testicle. You also do a, a cremaster reflex where you, you rub lightly or, or pinch the inside of the thigh. And um, the normal reflex would be for the testicle to elevate when you do that on the ipsilateral side. In testicular torsion, generally, you don't have that reflex, whereas in most of the others that we're talking about, the reflex will remain. So diagnosis is uh, often de based mostly on your your clinical diagnosis, it, and then once you identify it, you're going to send them for surgery. But you can also use ultrasound to confirm uh, that there's low blood flow. If you really think it's a testicular torsion, though, you don't need to wait for the ultrasound. You shouldn't wait for the ultrasound because you need to take care of it quickly. This is a true uh, testicular emergency because you can lose a testicle. In fact, uh, even those f who go to surgery, uh, their salvage rates are anywhere between 41 and 70 percent. So that's the main complications is, is the infertility that might... Uh, that might uh, result uh, of this. Um, so surgery involves uh, detorsion and fixation, uh, which is called uh, orchiopexy. Um, if you can't get them to surgery right away, you can try a manual detorsion, which basically just means grabbing that uh, testicle and trying to rotate it away from the midline so you're kind of rotating it out because most of these are rotated in. Um, it's something that uh, you should be real careful with because you can cause worse damage but but it's something that's okay to try. Even if it's successful meaning that there's a the pain resolves and the um, patient uh, looks normal again, then exams normal again, you still send them to surgery because you don't want this to happen again, and it most likely will if you don't get the, the surgery done. Epididymitis is the next 
uh, common cause of this. So, uh, most often this is infectious. It can be traumatic or autoimmune. The history usually involves acute or chronic scrotal swelling. Uh, unprotected sex sex is common, uh, a common part of the history, and urinary symptoms. On exam, uh, you'll you'll find the uh, epididymal induration and tenderness. Uh, it could have swelling or no swelling. It could have a, a nodule uh, or or no palpable nodule. The diagnosis is again uh, clinical, but you do a UA, you do an STI screen. Um, you need to rule out torsion. So uh, in cases where you're not sure, you, s you definitely need to do an ultrasound to rule out torsion. So treatment is uh, outpatient with ceftriaxone and doxycycline or uh, quinolone if, if the patient has anal sex. And uh, you f make sure they follow up with a urologist if they don't have resolution in a couple, two to three days. If it's non-infectious, then supportive treatment is usually enough. Uh, complications, this, this can get really, really nasty pretty fast uh, if it's not treated. So it could, could lead to sepsis um, and other, other severe infection. Orchitis is usually associated with epididymitis. That's why I've got it right here. It can be found alone with mumps, but most of the time you'll see it as uh, epididymitis. Fournier's gangrene. I'm not sure how common this is. I haven't seen it personally, but I've seen pictures and they're super nasty. So this is necrotizing fasciitis of the perineum. And it's caused by mixed aerobic and anaerobic infection. I didn't see anything that uh, talked about what would predispose you to this. I would imagine, of course, um, if you have a compromised immune system. But I don't know if, if there are certain activities that are associated with it. If you look that up, please leave it in the comments for us. But the history involves a severe pain that migrates usually from the anterior abdominal wall to the glute gluteal muscles and the scrotum. And on exam, uh, early on, you'll see tense edema outside the involved sk skin, and then you can see blisters and bullae, uh, crepitus and subcutaneous gas, and uh, fever, tachycardia, hypotension. So this is a, is a really bad infection, and it spreads extremely quickly. You can diagnose this. Uh, with uh, just based on on clinical signs, um, CTs can show gas in the subcutaneous tissue, but this is another one that's a real emergency. So if if you're pretty sure that this is what's going on, they need to go to surgery immediately. And the surgery is is aggressive and uh, and can be disfiguring, but uh, if if not treated, it will often lead to sepsis or death. So you may lose your bladder or your testicle, but uh, it's better than uh, dying. Hydrocele is a little bit more common, and uh, it can, can be caused by incomplete closure of the proce processus vaginalis. So that's, uh, that's when you see hydrocele in, in young kids. And it's usually asymptomatic, um, and uh, you often don't have to treat it. But if it persists in young children, then then you generally will will treat it if it's causing any symptoms. Um, the diagnosis is clinical. Sorry, I skipped the exam, which is where you shine the light through, and and you can see that it, that it transilluminates. So you. It's it's not opaque. Um, you you do an ultrasound generally on most of these just to make sure that it's not a hernia or cancer if you can't tell for sure. And a big thing about this is hydrocele can be caused by a lot of things. Uh, it can be secondary to to uh, any of the things that we've talked about really. So make sure that you're you're assessing for any other cause, especially if it's uh, in an older patient. 
a varicose seal. This is just uh, varicose veins in the testicles, basically. It's dilation of the pampiniform venous plexus. It's usually asymptomatic, but you might have some vague scrotal pain. It's more often on the left than the right. And uh, it may disappear when they're supine. It doesn't transilluminate like the hydrocele. And people often describe it like a bag of worms. I haven't felt it, so I don't know how accurate that description is. Ultrasound is used for diagnosis. You treat it if it's symptomatic or if it's um, if it, it makes up 60% of the total volume of the scrotal sac. Uh, surgical uh, varicocelectomy, ligation, or IR embolization are the treatments. Appendix testes torsion. I didn't see what caused this, so I didn't I didn't put a cause here, but it's it's more often seen in ages seven to fourteen, and it will have kind of a similar presentation, except usually it's more gradual than, for example, a, a testicular torsion, or even an ep epididymitis. Hydrocele is often present. And then here's the blue dot sign um, where you can see a, a darkened area on the, the top front part of the testicle. And um, that's because of the infarcted tissue that, that's underneath the skin there that you can see. And it's generally real tender there, whereas... Uh, epididymitis will not be tender just in that one spot. It'll be uh, more diffusely tender. So the diagnosis is based on, on clinical most of the time, and uh, ultrasound can also be used. You treat it conservatively. Um, you don't necessarily need your appendix of your testes, um, so it's not like a surgical emergency you can just do rest, ice, NSAIDs, sometimes surgery if it if it doesn't go away, if it keeps giving you problems. Oh, here's your blue dot. So testicular cancer, I'll just mention briefly because it's, it's really a, a subject of its own, but it's usually painless as opposed to some of these others. And it can be acutely painful, especially if it's a rapidly growing germ cell tumor. But most often it's not. It's usually palpable, uh, painless mass, um, often indurated and hard. The diagnosis is based on uh, ultrasound more than clinical. And uh, in treatment are surgery, uh, chemotherapy, drugs, radiation, etc. So thanks to Gray's Anatomy and Mr. Henry Gray for your uh, picture of the testicle that we used. And if you want to be involved or help out in this project, you can go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer, or you can leave a comment below or share this with your friends. Thank you.